Hello and welcome back to another video on Adobe Photoshop. Today we're going to be talking about how to do corrections in your photographs, specifically doing content fill correction, and then we're going to do a lot more advanced correction on this particular photograph. Some of the times when we're editing in photographs, one of the things that we need to fix sometimes are much older photographs that might get damaged, they might get scratched up, they might have some fading issues due to the paper, things like that. So today we're gonna talk about different techniques that you can use to edit photographs. I have these two images already loaded in Photoshop. These are family photos um, of my father and his brother um, that we're gonna edit today that have been sitting in a box for a lot of years and got some significant significant damage to them. So we're going to do some corrections on those today. The first technique I really want to share is how to do content fill correction. So we have a few of these blemishes on the image that we are going to remove using content fill. I'm going to show you two different methods on how to do this so you can be as successful with it as possible. We are going to use the lasso tool today, which is right here. It is always up to you which preferred lasso tool you want to use depending on the level of cutting out you're doing. For today, we're not being super specific, so I'm going to use the lasso tool or L on my keyboard. I'm going to zoom in, and what we're aiming to do is fix this little mark right here. I'm just going to surround that mark um, so that the computer is well aware, excuse me, the program is aware of what I'm trying to correct. My image is locked as you can see on the layers panel here and I'm going to leave it locked because if I leave it like this and hit the delete or backspace key on my keyboard, it's going to populate the fill command box with content aware. Now I do have other options in here. It defaults to content aware. I can go into foreground, color, history, pattern, anything like that, but we're going to leave it on content aware today. Now Photoshop is going to use the other information in the photograph outside of the lassoed dancing ants area to help it patch this particular tool. And I'm going to say, okay. Now I'm going to zoom in. You can see it didn't do a perfect job. I'm going to deselect so you can see. And it didn't quite line up that line there. And that's okay for this. We're just trying to demonstrate how to use it. Now I'm going to undo what I did and I'm going to deselect. And I'm going to show you the way I would fix this, which would be to actually use the clone stamp tool where I'm gonna target using my Alt key. You can see it as I'm holding it down here, it's changing. And I'm gonna use that to kind of help me line up the stripe kind of pattern and the texture of the side of the house here and repair it. Now, one of the things I have to do sometimes is retarget as I go through this image, and that's completely okay. Um, this is how I learned to repair photographs um, many, many moons ago. Um, so this tends to be my default way. I kind of like to do it a little bit by hand, and then I would go back in and kind of smooth out some of those with the spot healing brush tool, little things things like that just to help clean it up. Um, and then you always have to be kind of careful because I overdid it right there and it brought back a little bit of that stripe. But my thought is always when you zoom out, nobody's going to look at that. Nobody's going to see it unless it's pointed out to them. So we're going to do this one. This one is going to be a lot easier to do because there isn't that pattern that's a part of it. And again, just backspace, say okay. And you see it did a pretty good job on that one. Pretty good job. Now I'm gonna unlock this image to do the last one because I want you to see that if I do it this time with the image unlocked, it's just gonna pop a hole through my image here and that's definitely not what I want. So instead, I'm gonna go to edit and I'm gonna say content aware fill. Now you get a much more complicated um, or a lot more detailed panel that pops open. And one of the things you should notice is the program is kind of highlighted here in green what it's going to use to fix this particular blemish. And you can see it's got some of the shoe and the pant leg here. So we can fix that. And I can just take that with the negative tool up here and I can kind of erase that so the computer doesn't use some of that by accident. I can also use the plus sign and using my brackets keys, I can zoom in and out on that brush to increase its size if I want to give the program a little bit more to work with. Okay. And now I'm going to just say apply so that you can see it goes away and I'm going to say okay. Command D to deselect. 
Now, if you'll look, this photograph looks a little um, tinged on green. Some of the colors have kind of lost their, their dynamic properties more than likely just due to the paper fading. One of the things I do want you to note though is the correction is in its own layer. So I'm actually gonna take these two layers and I am going to, sorry. Well, oh, huh. we're gonna flip these into smart objects. There we go. And now they're all together and then I'm just going to rasterize them again so I can make some adjustments. So I'm going to go to adjustments. Because this is a black and white image, I don't feel the need to do color correction. However, I could do color balance if I wanted to and add a little bit more blue to this. Okay. However, because it's a black and white image, I want it to stay a black and white image. I'm just going to put a black and white filter on this. And then for me, I like to, I'm going to pop this out here so I can get that open. I like to go back in and kind of make some adjustments here. Um, I know, for example, this sweater stripe is kind of a maroon and cream based on my dad telling me about this. So I'm actually going to pull the reds down a little. I'm going to pull my blues down just a smidge, turn my whites or my yellows up, trying to just increase increase the contrast a little bit on what the the guys here look like and kind of make some adjustments. The other thing I always like to do is I always like to put on a contrast adjustment and then I like to brighten up my images just a little. I don't like to go crazy with that because I don't want them to look overdone. Last thing we're going to do on this is just practice our cropping skills again and we're going to see for crop and I'm going to just pull out that white border so that it's nice and equal. So we're just going to crop that and then hit enter to say okay. The other thing we could have done is we could have used our straighten if we wanted to straighten this out just a little um, to help kind of straighten it out, but I just don't think that's necessary for this particular one. We're going to finish this, save it, and that's done for that one. That looks much better. This one is more of a challenge. This one is more of a challenge. So for this one, we're going to have to use a lot of combinations of skills in order to effectively repair some of this damage. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm just going to show you a few various techniques to help you repair this one. One thing I am going to say is this one's very difficult to color correct because it is so red. Um, it really, this was the era of the like late seventies, early sixties, and the paper did not hold its color very well. So it's really faded hard. Also, they tended to use these like reddish brown backgrounds. So that isn't great for color correction. So we're going to color correct to a degree, but I am well aware that this is not going to get perfect. I like to always start with anything like this with my spot healing brush tool to get some of these smaller pieces and to fix um, all these blemishes. This is my dad, by the way. Um, and this was the norm in this era was to take these kind of um, photographs at studios and I'm just kind of going through and finding these areas and cleaning it up. The beautiful thing about a background like this is you do have so much material to work with that you're able to clean this up fairly effectively without people noticing. However, one thing you have to watch is it does change color. So if I, you know, went like this, it's not going to do as great of a job. I can see my changes here because of that kind of great gradation really in that background. So I like to kind of do it a little smaller and in smaller increments and fix up some of these areas. Now this one's larger. This is one where you can try the spot healing brush tool to begin. Um, I sometimes start with that and then I'll go back in with other tools. We're just going to see, yeah, I didn't do a great job. So I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to instead use my clone tool. Again, I'm a big fan of this tool. This is what I learned with and I'm going to follow that kind of pattern because it's in this kind of rotation pattern. And I'm going to use this area over here that I've already done some correction on. Again, I can come up here and I'm not going to worry about getting off because I'm going to crop all this out when I'm done. If I want to use this area over here to help me clean up this, I do need to fix this first to ensure that I've got a nice clean place to pick up my pattern from. Remember that when we're doing the clone, it literally clones. So when we use this, I like to pull my hardness down really low so that it kind of blends in those colors really well. Again, I don't use this um, lightly. I, I really kind of am very cautious. See, I went too far up there. So I'm going to come over here and grab from here. I like to use this very um, 
sparingly on on textures and backgrounds and things like that and i would continue kind of cleaning this up now down here we're going to do some similar kind of work with this these kind of two rips that go through and we're going to keep using these various tools in order to ensure that we're cleaning it up you can use the patch tool for example if i wanted to patch this particular area and pull up to here and that lets me patch larger areas quickly now through the sleeve and the jacket, you can't really do a lot of the patch tool or the spot healing brush or the brush tool because it's got some textures in it. Now that didn't do that bad. I actually, I'm very surprised by that. But we lost that seam right there. So I'm gonna use this again, kind of sparingly. I'm gonna watch kind of the areas I pick from kind of cleaning up and I'm gonna skip where the seams are for now and then I can pick those up later. Um, I wanna just kind of clean up, again, my source areas first that I wanna use to clean up some of this jacket. Um, with this, again, I go back to my clone. I'm gonna target the edge of his sleeve right here and just kind of line that up so that again, these older photographs, when you zoom out of them, nobody notices, which is great. Um, now this one, I'm gonna bump out just a little because I feel like that got a little off its edge right there so i'm going to retarget that and kind of pull that out just a little and smooth that in there we go that's better same for this edge right here i kind of have to be cautious about lining it up and then going back and moving back to my spot healing brush tool which is again j not again which is j on your keyboard if you want to bounce back and forth between those once we get the scratches cleaned up then you can start really cleaning up the rest of this area and starting to move through the rest of the shirt. See, I went too far right there, so I gotta use that clone instead. And I'm gonna shrink my brush down here, and I'm gonna start kind of targeting this highlight. Again, you have to watch the color choices that you're making within the object because there's a shadow right here. One of the things that always looks super obvious to me when people have edited things like this photograph is when the light no longer lines up anymore with the subject. I'm not going to finish repairing this one just because I want to make sure that I go through color correction really quickly, but make sure that you kind of use those various techniques on the rest of these scratches and getting all of this area cleaned up so it looks nice and smooth. So we're going to start with a color balance on this one. If my image is too red orange, I'm going to have to adjust not only for red, but a little bit for yellow as well. So I'm going to pull over and I like to go kind of slow with this, a little of both. I may add a little green, but I don't want to go again. I don't want to go crazy because I know that I'm not going to be able to repair this one as much as I would want to because there's just so much. So I'm kind of aiming for his shirt color in here so that it's no longer kind of yellowy. Um, I'm on my mid-tones right now. I'm gonna go into my highlights as well and I'm gonna adjust my highlights. Remember that you don't wanna just adjust one set of tones. You do wanna go in and adjust multiple things and now I'm gonna drop into my shadows as well. See, that's where my shadows get real purple. So I really wanna watch how hard I go on my shadows. And again, this is never gonna be perfect. Um, ooh, we're gonna pause on that restart. And it's I'm just trying to get it closer. Maroon tie, brown jacket, brownish background. He had real dark hair um, when he was younger. And then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to change my contrast again and turn that down. I'm going to brighten him up just a little bit. And then the last thing that I'm going to do for this is because I know he has black hair. I'm going to go in with my, nope, with my burn tool. That's Dodge. My burn tool. And I'm going to just ever so slightly turn my exposure down. I'm going to mess with my shadows and my midtones and my highlights, and I'm just going to darken up his hair just a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy because again, I don't want it to look photoshopped. I don't want it to look faked, but I'm just going to slightly darken up his hair so it doesn't look red. My, you know, my dad did not have red hair by any stretch. Um, he was a handsome man, handsome man. And then I'm going to just slightly brighten up. Oop, I do not need to be on mid-tones. I need to be on my shadows and just brighten up a little bit on his face. 
just so he starts to look a little bit more flesh toned. Again, the tones get a little weird because this photo was so color damaged, but your goal is to finish correcting the rest of this and to get it as clean as you can. Hopefully that helps you correct these older, more dingy photographs and figure out how to master this particular skill. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video for more, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, friends.